on a cold and frosty February morning in Kingsclear in North Hampshire. It's where we're going to start today's walk. It's a six mile jaunt across the North Hants Downs that ultimately takes us to Beacon Hill. It starts here at the remarkable St Mary's Church, Kingsclear. It's a Norman church restored in 1848 where they gave these exterior walls a split flints. And up there is the weather vane where King's Clear's remarkable story begins. So we're just leaving King's Clear now. Kingsclere used to sit on the royal route between Winchester and London. And up there is Cottington's Hill, where the early Plantagenet kings built a royal residence. In fact, the mast marks the site of that house and itself sits on the site of a nine acre Iron Age hill fort. King Henry II built Fremantle Deer Park up there. And his son, King John, one of our more grumpy monarchs, was a regular visitor. It was whilst attempting to leave during one of these visits, he was prevented from leaving Kingsclear by fog and was forced to take up hostelry in a local pub, The Crown, whereupon he was set upon by an assailant. But this assailant was no human. It was a bed bug and it kept him awake all night long. <laughs> In the morning, things got a little bit tetchy, and the king declared that henceforth the town would bear a bedbug weather vane as a sign of his royal displeasure. Our route takes us all the way to the top of the hill. Over there is Parkhouse Stables, and it's the oldest, or one of the oldest, private racing establishments in the country. Since 1964, it's been run by the Balding family. In fact, Claire Balding, the sports presenter, comes from King's Clear herself. The great Mill Reef was raised and trained at those stables. So this is Cottington's Hill, and over there, that's the Hannington Transmitter, and it dominates the landscape for miles around. Built in 1969, it stands just shy of 500 feet from base to top. Did you know that on the 26th of November, 1977, early one Saturday evening, an ITN news broadcast was interrupted? by a six minutes transmission by someone calling himself Vrillin from the Ashtar Galactic Command. And he was circling the Earth in his spaceship. Of course, it was a hoax because as you and I both know, aliens don't exist. And I can guarantee that because my mate Glut from the planet Zog told me so. Anyway, the culprits were never found. And uh, despite extensive investigation by the police and the IBA, but it's not the only time, it's not the only time the transmitter has been subject to uh, sabotage because in 1994, during the live broadcast of the World Cup final, someone deliberately cut off the electricity supply for two hours. And that is not funny, I'm sorry. Although it, was, it wasn't a very good game. It uh, ended nil-nil, went to penalties. Baggio missed the all-important penalty. Aliens, honestly. <laughs> What a joke. This is the voice of Omar, representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command, speaking to you. For many years you have seen us as knights in the skies. We speak to you now to service them as we have done to your brothers and sisters all over this, your planet Earth.
about halfway along our walk now. Uh, over there is the trig point marking the top of Watership Down, seven, seven, seven feet. And all around us are loads of gallops, hence these horsey type fences here. And uh, horses have been trained up on these downs for, since the 18th century. It's a good point for us to stop and have a bite to eat now, I think, whilst we're still warm. Watership Down is no ordinary hill in Hampshire. Local author Richard Adams used to tell the story about migrating rabbits to his children, and he was pers persuaded to put it into print. So he took two years to write the book. And do you know, he was rejected 13 times before it went to print. 13 times. Talk about J.K. Rowling and her seven rejections. Watership Down went on to become the fastest million seller in the UK and the US. It's still in print and is currently Penguin Books' best-selling novel of all time. 13 times. Just down there, that house within the grounds is Sidmonton Court, a 16th century house, which is today owned by the musical composer and impresario Andrew Lloyd Webber. And he bought the estate on funds amassed from his production, Jesus Christ Superstar. And uh, he owns much of the land. He owns Watership Down. And today he's known as Baron Lloyd Webber of Sidmonton. And you can actually see just to the side there is the private chapel of the estate, which he had converted into a theater, a mini theater. And what he does is he shows all his productions to a hand-picked audience before it goes out to a public consumption. And this has proved very successful because that way people can be physically restrained from leaving the building. And in some cases, they're even chained to their seats. You know, I've been coming up on Watership Down now. This is about my fifth visit. And in all the times I've come here, I have never once seen a rabbit. Of course, what the book did do was introduce to us a whole new sort of rabbit mythology. No longer were these a bunch of carrot-munching, cutesy, cuddly leperines. Now they had an ordered society, sometimes totalitarian. They could be humane, they could be despotic, they could be psychic, they could be psychotic. And it's not so far-fetched as you might think because I've had rabbits myself. I kept a few and one of them was just a complete nutter off the map. This thing was uncontrollable, but ultimately very tasty. So the cluster of trees over there on the top of that hill, that's the far western end of Watership Down, where we had our lunch and the trig point. Come down over the ravine and we're heading up that way now. Watership Down was made into an animated film at the end of the 1970s, and the title song became the top selling single of 1979. It stayed at number one in the UK for six weeks. One of those weeks was when Margaret Thatcher was elected Prime Minister. Now heading this way, and barring our uh, route is a group of sheep.
Here at Old Burghclere we're crossing the old Didcot, Newbury and Southampton railway line. Opened on the 1st of May 1885 and closed by the good Dr Beeching 80 years later. We're now going to head towards All Saints Church, cross a field and then make for our final destination, Beacon Hill. Here on Beacon Hill, I walk climaxes in this climb. This walk really does end on a high. Here we are on Beacon Hill, 856 feet, surmounted by this 3,000 year old hill fort, which overlooks the Kennet Valley to the north, with Ladle Hill across the valley to the east. So from the top, you get wonderful peripheral views in all directions. Over to the north, we can make out Highclere Castle. Since 1692 has been home to the Herbert family, who themselves since 1793 have held the title Earl of Carnarvon. In 1842, it was changed from a house to a castle by Sir Charles Barry, the man who designed the Houses of Parliament, giving it a classic Victorian Gothic exterior. The most famous of the earls was George Herbert, who along with Howard Carter made one of the most sensational archaeological discoveries ever. A keen Egyptologist, the fifth earl had sponsored Howard Carter since 1907. And on the 26th of November, 1922, the two men uncovered the previously unknown tomb of a boy pharaoh by the name of Tutankhamun. This gap between the walls would have been the south gate, the main entrance to the Iron Age Hellfort. And it faces south. And down there is what's known as Seven Barrows Down, where a rash of burial mounds straddles the busy A34. Along those flat fields was where the career of one of Britain's most enigmatic aircraft designers of the 20th century, his career literally took off from those fields on the 10th of September 1910. Geoffrey de Havilland was literally our very own aviator. In 1920 he formed the de Havilland Aircraft Company and was instrumental in the design of over 50 aircraft which include the Tiger Moth, and the Mosquito. The Mosquito was just the most sensational aircraft of World War II. It was built entirely of wood and it sacrificed heavy armaments for speed and agility and could notch up speeds of 380 miles per hour. Geoffrey de Havilland was knighted in 1944 and he went on to design the world's first turbojet passenger airliner, the Comet. He died in 1965. The memorial stone and Seven Barrows Down was put there in 1966. For the movie buffs amongst you who recognise his name, he was cousin to the two Oscar winning sibling actresses, Joan Fontaine and Olivia de Havilland, best known for her role in Gone with the Wind. The Mosquito is my way of linking Geoffrey de Havilland's story with that of the fifth earl. For only months after the discovery of Tutankhamun, he was found dead on the 5th of April 1923 in his room in the Winter Palace Hotel in Cairo. He had cut an infected mosquito bite while shaving. Some people said, and still say, 
but it was as a result of the dreaded curse of the mummy. The fact that Howard Carter lived for another 16 years doesn't seem to equate. But in accordance with the Earl's wishes, his body was brought back to his beloved Highclere and buried here within the ramparts of the Hillford.